Good evening, you're watching the news. I'm Nidhi Razdan and these are the headlines tonight. The AAP BJP fight reaches Gujarat full throttle campaigning in the state. Manish Shishodia claims the BJP offered him the chief minister's post if he joined them. The AAP claims he has an audio recording of the same. The BJP meanwhile continues to target Shishodia on the liquor policy scam. Russia says it stopped a terror attack in India, arresting an ISIS terrorist who they say was apparently planning an attack against an Indian leader. The Patna ADM is seen thrashing, protesting teacher aspirants. Hundreds of aspiring teachers are lati charged. A probe has been ordered after the outrage. Rahul Gandhi meets civil society leaders seeking support for his Bharat Jodo Yatra, including those who've been his critics in the past, like Yogendra Yadav. It's the biggest fall for the stock markets in two months with Metals, Realty, PSU Banks, the worst hit. We'll tell you why. Our top story tonight is the sensational fight between the BJP and the AAP, which has now reached the battleground of Gujarat. In fact, uh, there have been a number of trips undertaken to Gujarat by Arvind K. Jriwal in the last few months, perhaps as many as 10 in the last four months uh, when we last counted. But today it acquires a more significant uh, symbolism simply because uh, Manish Shodia, Delhi's deputy chief minister, is the target uh, of the CBI in a corruption case now, which has turned into a full-blown political war. Speaking to journalists today, Manish Shodia made the claim that he had been approached by BJP leaders to break away from the AAP and join them uh, in return for cases against him being dropped. Uh, the AAP, in fact, has also claimed that it has an audio recording of this as well. Let's see how it all played out today. Aam Party's big two in Gujarat, a show of strength in the shadow of the corruption charges against Delhi's Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia. Talking to the press, Mr. Susodia repeated the bombshell allegation he had tweeted earlier on a supposed offer from the BJP. I have a message that there were two messages, two parts of that message. One is that the CBI and CBI case is going to be finished with the CBI. And the other is that you are going to join the BJP पार्टी तोड़ के बीजेपी ज्वाइन कर लीजिए और हम आपको सीएम बना देंगे क्योंकि हमारे पास में कोई सीएम कैंडिडेट नहीं है वहां पे दिल्ली में भारतीय जनता पार्टी में मैं एक ईमानदार आदमी हूं इनफैक्ट मैं अरविंद केजरीवाल जी की टीम में हूं ही इसलिए कि मैं कट्टर ईमानदार आदमी हूं When asked about who reached out to him the minister ducked specifics simply saying that it was the same people responsible for other party swaps to the BJP जो लोग जिन्होंने मुझे मैसेज दिया उन्होंने मुझे कहा कि वेस्ट बंगाल में शुभेंदु अधिकारी जी को हम नहीं ज्वाइन कराया था उन्होंने कहा कि हम पे आप भरोसा रखिए Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, who's on his 10th visit to Gujarat since May, today defended the liquor policy which led to the CBI's raid on his deputy. साढ़े आठ सौ दुकानें खुलनी थी दिल्ली के अंदर एक एक करके साढ़े साढ़े तीन सौ दुकानें खुल पाई पांच सौ दुकानें नहीं खुल पाई वो पॉलिसी बहुत अच्छी है हम किसी के साथ भी डिबेट करने के लिए तैयार हैं इसको गिरफ्तार कर लिया एक और कल केस एक और रजिस्टर कर दिया अभी तो बहुत गिरफ्तारियां होंगी ये सब गुजरात के चुनाव की वजह से दिसंबर में खत्म हो जाएगा the BJP, which protested near Arvind Kejriwal's house in Delhi, called Sisodia's claim a move to escape the corruption allegations on Delhi's excise policy. Maharana Pratap se tul apni tulna kar rahe hain jiske upar 10,000 crore ke ghotale ka aarop hai, sharab ghotale ka aarop hai. Aam admi party ke log brashta chari ho sakte hain. कहा ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी जैसी पवित्र आत्मा की पार्टी का सोच भी इन्होंने जो रखा है मुझे लगता है पूरा देश पूरी दिल्ली हंस रही है और इनको अपने किए की सजा जरूर बट आम आदमी पार्टी बिग टू हैव टेकन द बैटल टू द होम स्टेट ऑफ द बीजेपी इज बिग टू केजरीवाल स्पेल्ट आउट वॉट ही हैव टू ऑफर गुजरात वोटर्स लेटर दिस ईयर इन दी असेंबली पोल्स फ्री एजुकेशन फ्री हेल्थ केयर 
free power in the face of the Prime Minister's attack on freebies. If the Aam Aadmi Party gains a significant seat share in Gujarat, it will be crucial for the party, not just for relevance within the state, but also for its national goals. Being recognized as a state party in Gujarat will take the Aam Aadmi Party a step towards becoming a national party. It will also send out a strong statement towards the Aam Aadmi Party's Modi versus Kejriwal vision for 2024. The Gujarat polls to be held later this year will make it clear whether the Aam Aadmi Party has made an impact beyond just Delhi and Punjab. In Gujarat, with Sharad Sharma and camera person Ashwini Mehra, Priyanshi Sharma for NDTV. Well, Priyanshi is joining us live now from Gujarat with more on that political row that's broken out over Manish Shishodia's allegations of being offered a post by the BJP. Uh, now, Priyanshi, the AAP is claiming this evening that they actually have an audio recording of the BJP leader who approached him. Tell us more. That's right, Nidhi. The biggest uh, claim in this political battle between the Aam Aadmi Party and the BJP over, uh, uh, over the controversy, controversy that has been going on on the CBI probe on Manish Sisodia, the biggest claim in that fight today was Manish Sisodia saying that some BJP leader reached out to him and said that break away from the Aam Aadmi Party, join the BJP and we'll make you the CM face for Delhi since we don't have any other CM face in Delhi as of yet. Now, the Aam Aadmi Party sources are claiming that Mr. Manish Sisodia, in fact, has recordings of this conversation that he, that he had with a BJP leader. Now, Mr. Manish Sisodia, in his press conference in Ahmedabad, just in the afternoon today, claimed that he had a conversation with somebody and at that time, he refused to uh, explicitly mention who that conversation was with. He just said that it was the conversation with the same people who said that they also uh, were behind the swap uh, were behind uh, Mr. Hemanta Biswa Sarma in Assam join, uh, joining the BJP from the Congress. It was uh, he, uh, the same people also behind Mr. Suvendu Adhikari joining the BJP. About and why uh, they're also not releasing uh, Mr. This Jayant tape. Panda joining the BJP. Priyanshi, has the AAP explained at all why they're not releasing this recording if they have it? Anything they're saying on that? Not yet, Nidhi. They've just said that we will release it when the time comes, when uh, push comes to shove. We will have to release All these right. recordings. We have it for now. And uh, Mr. Manish Sisodia recorded that whenever that conversation happened with the BJP leader. But they've not released it yet. No schedule for it yet. All but right. whenever the well, time comes see. is what our sources let's are claiming. Let's see if they, if they do do that and, and uh, if and when that happens. Thanks very much, Priyanshi. Uh, Arvind Kejriwal and Manish Sisodia will be in Gujarat tomorrow as well. Meanwhile, Russia's Federal Security Service says that it's arrested uh, and alleged ISIS terrorist who was planning an attack on an Indian leader. My colleague Vishnu Shom now joins us for more on that. Vishnu, what do we know about this? Well, Nidhi, it is actually quite frightening because this was a plot which was apparently being hatched in Turkey. And what we do know, and this is very basic information, is that the name of this IS, this uh, operative was Azamov Mashahont. That's, uh, you can see him over there on the screen, born in 1992. This is after he was taken into custody in Russia. A couple of points, he was on his, he had become an operative just this year and it was during a visit to Turkey that he was apparently indoctrinated. Uh, he was apparently going to be coming to India, flying across uh, where he was prepared to, uh, to attack a, a major part of a, a figure, figure in this government. But the motive of the attack uh, is still unclear, though some suggest that in his confession, uh, to the Russians, he said that the insulting remarks made on the Prophet Muhammad uh, were the main reasons why he was going to attack. Remember, flights actually exist between Moscow and Delhi, so it's actually much easier to travel from Moscow uh, to India. Uh, and uh, therefore, that was a, a route which he had taken. He was flying via Moscow. Uh, so that's what the little information that we have at this stage. Apparently, an Uzbek national is what we are told. All right, Vishnu, thanks very much for that uh, uh, detail there on, on that story. Meanwhile, back home, hundreds of aspiring teachers were lati charged in Patna today as they protested against the delay in their recruitment. A video that went viral shows KK Singh, Patna's additional district magistrate, thrashing a protester with a stick while he lies on the ground holding the national flag. The video shows the candidate being dragged on the road by the bureaucrat. The police were also seen using water cannons to disperse the protesters. After the outrage, Deputy Chief Minister Tejasvi Yadav promised action against the officer and a probe was also ordered.
Kolkata police lati charged and used water cannons on hundreds of aspirant teachers today as they protested against delays in their recruitment. From the protest, a shocking video of a senior district official KK Singh, Patna's additional district magistrate, who thrashed a protester and dragged him on the ground. The ADM's boss, the Patna DM, has ordered an inquiry against the ADM and Deputy Chief Minister Tejasvi Yadav has also promised action against the officer. We have asked what is going on. So they have made a committee that has been made a committee. They will get a punishment on the two sides. Everyone is coming in a great number. We are meeting with all people. And we are doing the same thing with all the students that you are going to be a धैर्य रखिए उसी दिशा में हम लोग काम कर रहे हैं और हमारी तो लड़ाई रही है रोजगार को लेकर के नौकरी को लेकर के द टीचर्स जॉब एस्पिरेंट्स टुक टू द स्ट्रीट्स टू प्रेशर अथॉरिटीज सेइंग दैट डिस्पाइट क्वालिफाइंग फॉर द टू एलिजिबिलिटी टेस्ट्स दे आर स्टिल अनएम्प्लॉयड हम लोग 2019 दिसंबर से पास है और 2019 दिसंबर से सड़क पर हम लोग लड़ रहे हैं नीतीश कुमार से मांग रहे हैं विज्ञप्ति दीजिए उसके बावजूद भी आज तक 19 से लेकर आज 22 अगस्त हो गया अभी तक हम लोग को विज्ञापन जारी नहीं किया गया इराडिकेटिंग अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इज द मेन प्रॉमिस मेड बाय द न्यू नीतीश तेजस्वी गवर्नमेंट इन बिहार बट द वाइड स्प्रेड प्रोटेस्ट बाय एस्पायरिंग टीचर्स एंड इवन वर्स दर्सिलिस रिस्पॉन्स मीन दैट द न्यू गवर्नमेंट इज इंट ऑफ टू गुड स्टार्ट विद मनीष कुमार नयन तारा सिंह फॉर एन डी Meanwhile, protesting farmers returned to the national capital today after many months as hundreds of them from various states are demanding MSP guarantees, amongst other things. Security was stepped up significantly in the Delhi national capital region. As a result of that, additional forces were deployed at border entry points, including Singhu, Tikri and Ghazipur. Some farmers were detained and taken away in buses at the Ghazipur border. Congress MP Rahul Gandhi met a number of civil society leaders today asking them for their support for his Bharat Jodo Yatra that starts from the 7th of September. The Congress has appealed to all non-BJP parties and civil society members to support the Yatra, saying it's not political. Amongst those who attended today included uh, MagSai Sai winner uh, Aruna Roy, Yogendra Yadav, interestingly, who's also been a very strong critic uh, of the Congress in the past, RTI activist Anjali Bhardwaj, amongst others. In Srinagar today, National Conference President Farooq Abdullah chaired an all-party meeting of opposition parties today to discuss the controversy over the right to vote for non-locals in Jammu and Kashmir. He later told reporters the parties may go to court over the move and expressed concerns that terrorists may target more non-locals because of this. The meeting was attended by the NC, the PDP, Congress, CPM, Shiv Sena, JDU amongst others. JNK's chief electoral officer had said last week that after the abrogation of 370, Non-locals working or ordinarily living in JNK can now register as voters and that after the revision of electoral rolls, nearly 25 lakh new voters will be added. The JNK government, however, said this was a misrepresentation of facts spread by vested interests. The BJP held its own counter-meeting today in Jammu. The parties are sitting here, the people who have the law, that the people who vote the law, we all are together. और इसको कबूल करने के लिए तैयार नहीं है ये जो इनने कानून लाया है ये भी एक मुसीबत का घर बनेगी क्योंकि हर एक को तो पहले पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज को हमारे पास प्रोटेक्शन नहीं है इनके पास तो हर मजदूर को कैसे ये प्रोटेक्शन देंगे हमें वो भी खतरा है Meanwhile, moving on to the stock markets, which are going downhill, both the Nifty and the Sensex declined 1.5% in trade today, which is the worst fall for the markets in two months. Sakshi now joins us for more on that. Sakshi, why is this happening? That's right, Nidhi. Markets witnessed the worst fall in two months. Selling was across the board with all sectors ending in the red. The Nifty gave up on the 17,500 mark and the Sensex tanked below 59,000. Investors remain concerned about the possibility of continued aggressive rate hikes from the US Fed and also keep an eye on the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium ahead of us. Remember, US inflation is at a fresh four-decade high and commentary on inflation will be watched closely. 
The rupee also weakened and after the dollar jumped to a fresh five-week high, of course, the pressure was witnessed on our currency. Experts believe the market sentiment could remain volatile in the days ahead as the focus has once again shifted on the global econ economy and global concerns. All right, Sakshi, thanks very much for that. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court today passed a historic order that could well become the template for running sports federations in the country. They terminated their own panel, aligned with the government to undo massive damage caused to India by FIFA's ban. Less than a week after the world football body banned Indian football, today the government proposed and the Supreme Court agreed to steps to undo the damage. Damage which mounted by the day. Today's scheduled matches with Vietnam and Singapore next month were cancelled. October's Under-17 Women's World Cup stands suspended. India's best women's club team are returning from Tashkent. India is banned from playing international matches and no FIFA funding. The government and Supreme Court have agreed to FIFA's demands. A Supreme Court panel administering Indian football has been terminated. It has been given back to AIFF, which has been suspended. Election has been postponed from 28th of August to 5th of September. The change in electoral college means independent voters like former captain Bajun Bhutia can't vote. The constitution I think is going to be made after the World Cup once the World Cup gets over. And it is therefore very important that when the constitution is made, the ex-eminent footballers, ex-footballers or eminent footballers should be heard. The interim boss of Indian football is Sunan Dudhar who was brought in by the Supreme Court panel to assist in day-to-day -day affairs of AIFF after Prafil Patel and panel had resigned. Obviously, uh, now we have been uh, uh, given the mandate to hold the elections by the first week of uh, next month. That's the, that's the primary focus at the moment would be. Uh, we hope to have the elections done by 4th or 5th of September. Obviously, we would hope uh, that uh, FIFA takes into uh, account whatever has been uh, ordered today, the judgment. FIFA banned India because Praful Patel held on to his post of AIFF president for 13 years before the courts ended it recently. The world body wants 10 years of a maximum of 12 years. The Supreme Court has ordered the government to inquire into allegations of financial wrongdoings during its times. Perhaps with learnings from the FIFA ban, the top court extended the status quo in Indian Olympic Association case, barring its high court appointed panel from taking over administration. With Arvin Gunasekar and Vimal Mohan, Rika Roy for NDTV. Meanwhile, heavy rain has been going on in many parts of Madhya Pradesh for the third straight day today, resulting in schools being closed in some districts, including the state capital Bhopal and Jabalpur. The Indian Med Department issued a red alert for today, predicting very heavy rain with extremely heavy rain in some parts of the state. And heavy rain has led to a flood-like situation in Kota, Bundi and some other districts in Rajasthan as well. Schools have been shut, low-lying areas submerged because of the heavy downpour. The Islamabad High Court has granted pre-arrest bail to Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan for three days after he was booked under the Anti-Terrorism Act for threatening a judge and senior police officers at a rally in the capital. It marks the latest in a series of political crises that have marked Pakistan for months now. Pakistan's ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan has been granted protective bail till Thursday by the Islamabad High Court in a terrorism case registered against him for threatening police, judiciary and other state institutions during a rally over the weekend. The petition filed by his lawyers stated that Khan was a target of the ruling PDM for his fearless criticism an extremely bold and blunt stance against corruption and corrupt politicians, the Dawn reported. Imran Khan has been staging popular anti-government protests, escalating political tensions in the country as he seeks to return to office after his government fell in April. Uh, no uh, military, no uh, agencies, no police, no paramilitary forces, no one can stand against the people of a country. Meanwhile, PTI leaders fired off warnings in the early hours of Monday 
saying arresting their leader would be crossing a red line, which also began to trend on Twitter. People of Pakistan have decided that they need a revolution in this country, and it will come. Some geopolitical experts believe every effort Pakistan's government makes to weaken Imran Khan will only end up making him stronger. Experts feel its repressive policies play to his strengths as a populist and enable him to channel public outrage to his advantage. Imran Khan's huge support base is evidence for this. Parmeshwar Bhava for NDTV. Well, uh, for the third time in just six months, 17-year-old Indian grandmaster Pragyananda Ramesh Babu defeated world champion Magnus Carlsen with the latest victory coming today at the FTX Crypto Cup, the American finale of the Champions Chess Tour in Miami.